He was a Kenyan anti-colonial activist and politician who governed Kenya as its prime minister from 1963 to 1964 and then as its first president from 1964 till his death in 1978. He was the country's first indigenous head of government and played a significant role in the transformation of Kenya from a colony of the British Empire into an independent republic. Ideologically an African nationalist and conservative, he led the Kenya African National Union Party from 1961 until his death. Kenyatta was a leader in the Kenyan independence movement, a strong supporter of a Kenyan government controlled by native Africans, and the nation's first prime minister as well as its first president. For Kenya, he was Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin and Paul River all rolled into one. To many Kenyans, he was Kenya. The story of Jomo Kenyatta is a very interesting one and in this video, we shall shine the light on how he rose to become the very first president of Kenya. But first, if you're new here, Welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. The first thing we'll be looking at is the early life of Jomo Kenyatta. Jomo Kenyatta was born as Kamau to parents Moigoi and Wamboi. His father was the chief of a small agricultural village in Kiambu district, one of five administrative districts in the central highlands of British East Africa, now Kenya. Kenyatta's dad died when he was very young and as custom dictated, he was adopted by his uncle Ngengi, who changed his name to Kamawu Wangengi. His uncle also took over the chiefdom and claimed his mother as wife. After Kenyatta's mother died during childbirth, he moved to live with his grandfather, Kungu Mangana, who was noted as a medicine man in the area. Around the age of 10, suffering from an infection, Kenyatta was taken to the Church of Scotland Mission at Thogoto, where a surgery was successfully carried out. Kenyatta was impressed by his first exposure to Europeans and was determined to join the mission school. He paid the school fees by working as a houseboy and a cook for a nearby white settler. Next, we'll be looking at British East Africa during World War I. In 1912, having completed his mission school education, Kenyatta became an apprentice carpenter. The following year he underwent initiation ceremonies including circumcision and in August 1914 he was baptized at the Church of Scotland Mission, initially taking the name John Peter Kamau but swiftly changing it to Johnson Kamau. He then departed the mission for Nairobi to seek employment. Initially he worked as an apprentice carpenter on a sisal farm in Thika under the guidance of John Cook, who had been in charge of the building program of Thogoto. As World War I progressed, able-bodied Kikuyu, Kenyatta's tribe men, were forced into work by the British authorities. To avoid this, Kenyatta moved to Narok, living amongst the Maasai, where he worked as a clerk for an Asian contractor. It was around this time that he took to wearing a traditional beaded belt known as Kenyatta, a Swahili word which means Light of Kenya. A start in politics Kenyatta worked as editor of the Kikuyu Central Association KCA Journal between 1924 and 1929 and by 1928 he had become the KCA's general secretary having given up his job with the municipality to make time. In May 1928, Kenyatta launched a monthly Kikuyu language newspaper called Migwitanya, a Kikuyu word meaning he who brings together, which was intended to draw all sections of the Kikuyu together. The territory's future in question. 
Worried about the future of its East African territories, the British government began toying with the idea of forming a union of Kenya, Uganda, and Tanganyika. Whilst this was fully supported by white settlers in the Central Highlands, it would be disastrous to Kikuyu interest. It was believed that the settlers would be given self-government and that the rights of the Kikuyu would be ignored. In February 1929, Kenyatta was dispatched to London to represent the KCA in discussions with the colonial office, but the Secretary of State for the Colonies refused to meet him. Undeterred, Kenyatta wrote several letters to British papers, including the Times. Kenyatta's letter published in the Times in March 1930 set out five points, the security of land tenor and the demand for land taken by European settlers to be returned, improved educational opportunities for black Africans, the repeal of hut and poll taxes, representation for black Africans in the Legislative Council, freedom to pursue traditional customs such as female genital mutilation. He returned to Kenya on 24 September 1930 landing at Mombasa. He had failed on his quest for all except one point, the right to develop independent educational institutions for black Africans. Representing the Kikuyu Kenyatta had achieved the goal with the move to independent African educational institutions, although they were still opposed by the colonial authorities. He had also set in motion the pattern for his future opposition to colonialism. In May 1931, Kenyatta once again left Kenya for London to represent the KCA before a parliamentary commission on the closer union of East Africa and once again he was ignored, this time despite the backing of liberals in the House of Commons. Kenyatta headed north to Birmingham and enrolled at the college for a year. Kenyatta would stay away from Kenya for the next 15 years. Having completed his course in Birmingham, Kenyatta returned to London and in June 1932, he testified to the Maurice Carter Kenya Land Commission on behalf of Kikuyu land claims. The report, which was not published until 1934, resulted in some of the appropriated territories being returned to the Kikuyu. But in general, the White Highlands policy of the colonial administration was maintained, restricting the Kikuyu to reservations. Kenyatta traveled and studied in Moscow, but his time in there wasn't long. Upon his return to London, he applied in several universities under different mentors, one of which inspired him to write his book, Facing Mount Kenya. Facing Mount Kenya remains an important work for its insights into the traditions of Kikuyu culture, written in a form which proved accessible to readers in the West. World War II Effectively cut off in Britain from the KCA, which had been banned back in Kenya by World War II, Kenyatta continued to campaign for Kikuyu rights, publishing several books and pamphlets, including a study of the Kikuyu language. Kenyatta supported himself and avoided being conscripted by working as a farm laborer and lecturing for the Workers' Educational Association. As the war progressed, Kenyatta became involved with a group of anti-colonial and African nationalists from around the African continent and the diaspora. Dr. Hastings Bana, the future president of Malawi, was stranded in London by World War II, and his house became a regular meeting place for Kenyatta and many other blacks. Together, they formed the Pan-African Federation. Return to Kenya Kenyatta returned to Kenya in September 1946 and he took up the post of principal at the Kenya Teachers College in Githunguri. 
He was also invited to lead the newly formed Kenya African Union, of which he became president in 1947. Over the next few years, Kenyatta traveled around Kenya, giving lectures and campaigning for independence. Mau Mau Rebellion The Kenyan crown colony was still dominated by white settler interest, and the dangerous explosion he had predicted in the times in 1930 became a reality, the Mau Mau Rebellion. Seen as a rebellious from his call for independence and support for nationalism, Kenyatta was implicated in the Mau Mau movement by the British authorities, and on 21 October 1952, he was arrested. On 8 April 1953, Kenyatta was sentenced to seven years hard labor for managing the Mau Mau terrorist organization. He spent the next six years at Lokitang before being moved to permanent restriction at Lodwar, a particularly remote desert army post. The Mau Mau rebellion had been crushed by the British army and the state of emergency was lifted on 10th November. The path to the presidency during Kenyatta's incarceration, the mantle of nationalist leadership had been taken up by Tom Boya and Oginga Odinga. Under their guidance, Kao merged with Kenya Independent Movement to form a new party, the Kenya African National Union or KANU, on 11th of June 1960. Kenyatta's 15 years stay away from Kenya had proven beneficial. He was seen by much of the black population of Kenya as the one person who was free from the ethnic bias and factional infighting of the new political parties. Mboya and Odinga arranged for his election as president of Kanu while he was still on the house arrest and campaigned for his release. On 21 August 1961, Kenyatta was finally released on the condition that he didn't run for public office. Independence for Kenya By 1960, the British government had considered the principle of one man one vote for Kenya and in 1962, Kenyatta went to the Lancaster Conference in London to negotiate the terms of Kenya's independence. In May 1963, Kano won the pre-independence election and formed a provisional government. When independence was achieved on 12 December that year, Kenyatta was prime minister. Exactly one year later, with the proclamation of the republic, Kenyatta became Kenya's first president. As president, he sorted that blacks and whites live together with equal rights and equal opportunities. It can be conveniently said that he had a smooth role. Kenyatta's Legacy Jomo Kenyatta died in his sleep on 22nd August 1978. Daniel Arab Moy took office as Kenya's second president and pledged to continue Kenyatta's good work under a system he called Nyoyo, a Swahili word for footsteps. Kenyatta maintained a friendly relationship with the West despite his treatment by the British as a suspected Mau Mau leader. Wives and Children Kenya's first president Jomo Kenyatta married four wives, Grace Wahu, Edna Clark, whom he married while he was in Britain, Grace Wanjiku, and Mamanjina. His children included President Uhuru Kenyatta by his fourth and youngest wife, Ngina. Little is known about Kenyatta's other wives and children. His eldest son, Peter Mwigai Kenyatta, by his first wife, Grace Wahu, was born in 1920 and died in October 1979, barely a year after his father's demise, on August 22, 1978. Peter Muigai Kenyatta was a prominent businessman in his own right and followed his father's footsteps into politics, 
getting elected the MP for Juja, a constituency neighboring that of his father's Gatundu constituency. His father subsequently appointed him Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs. Muigai featured evidently in his father's state funeral in 1978, accompanying the ceremonial gun carriage that transported the body to its last resting place at Parliament grounds, drawn by uniformed army officers. It was said the carriage was the same one that had carried wartime British Prime Minister Winston Churchill's body 13 years earlier. Kenyatta's second child was Margaret Rose Wamwe Kenyatta, born in 1928. Margaret, who died in 2017, was Kenyatta's favorite daughter and was elected the first and only woman mayor of Nairobi in 1970 after four terms as councillor for Dagoretti Ward in Nairobi. There you have it, the stories, the history of Kenya's first president, Jomo Kenyatta. Let us know of any other historical icon you want us to cover in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss out on any of our new uploads.